Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And yeah, it's not a normal one because I'm in my truck. And the reason I'm in my truck is because I'm on my way to Ian Tyrrell's workshop because it's his Sparda day, Lamborghini Sparda day. Because the rebuild is now completed, all the little bits I wanted doing are done and it's ready for collection. And I almost didn't sleep last night. It's about 160 miles between my house and Ian's workshop. And uh, that's where we're going this morning. And you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you just drive it? Didn't you want to drive home? Well, today's a Friday. Um, it's I have, The route isn't great. It's sort of up the motorways and then up the A5. There's lots of holiday traffic along the way. There's been queues, etc. And I've got quite a fun event next week I'm doing with the Espada. And also in the back I've got my friend's Kuntash because he wants uh, me and Tyrrell to have a, a sort of go over that and get it back on the road. He hasn't been on the road for uh, two or three years. It's all good but he just needs a check over before hitting the road. Yeah, if you're wondering why I've got a truck rather than a sort of dedicated sort of car trailer or something like that, I bought this um, seven and a half tonne curtain sided um, truck car transporter uh, five years ago now 2015 because I was actually looking for a big trailer but they're so expensive until you go in the market you they're a bit of a shock once you start specking up a good covered car trailer you're 15 20 thousand pounds and then this popped up I paid about five thousand pounds for this uh, I have spent a few thousand on it, I put a new diff on it, I had some rust sort of sorted out, but they're available uh, when they come up around £8,000 I suppose today this truck would be worth. Seems a bit of a bargain, I mean it's about a between, well less than half, almost a third of a price of a dedicated car trailer. Um, if you've got a place to store something like this, it seems a much better bet to me. But it just bosses taking cars around the country I find. It's really quite relaxing to drive. We're sitting at uh, the 90k sort of limit for trucks. Very quiet, great stereo, versing camera. Yeah, so that's why I have the truck. But if you want to, don't want to know about the truck, what you want to know about is the Espada. So I'm a few miles away and next time you join us We'll be outside here in Tyrrell's workshop and get first glimpse of the Espada. I always love coming to be in Tyrrell's workshop. It's on a, an a air, well, it's an airfield, active airbase, but it obviously has these fighter jets that have been abandoned here as well. So it's quite a sight to sort of come across these things, sort of tail fin and jet engines. The last thing you expect to find in a sort of usual sort of uh, business part, but uh, yeah, there's a Diablo outside. See the Espada. See a Rolls Royce. Oh, I can see the Espada. I can see the Espada. Oh no, it's not mine. Oh, there's so many, so many Espadas in. That's ridiculous. Well, there it is. Never mind that one. Look at that treasure trove. Right, that's it. Right, I'm gonna um, pack up and uh, let's go and have a close look at the Espada. Super shiny. I feel like a kid in a sweet shop every time I come here. Here it is. No. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I've been so looking forward to this moment when it's done. So yes. it's, well, it's been a while. But Subject uh, to you being happy with this. Well, I've been yeah, looking forward to it too. Well, it's literally <laughs> the first sign and I'm just drawn to this roof because, mm. I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it's been a battle, wasn't it, to know how to do it. Yeah. It just, it, it just looks like a show car. That's it what does. gets me with a clear roof in it. It sort of looks bigger than it did before. Yeah. I don't know why. But well, it, it, it looks looks more like the Marzal, of course. Well, yeah, it the does. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And that was the idea. And yeah. the bit that gets me before, you just saw this black panel. You weren't quite sure why it was this. Yes. All you do now, your eyes go straight into the inside. Yes. Yeah. And thank goodness the inside looks pretty good, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So we ended up, in, well, we were hoped it was going to be tinted. Well, we didn't really need it to be tinted. This is clear at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. A world tinted perspex shortage. In fact, there's been a world perspex shortage. Perspex shortage, isn't it? Uh, so yeah. trying to get anything is um, 
very difficult. Yeah. But um, I, I think it works clear because the, these windows aren't um, no. incredibly tinted. They're very subtle tint. Isn't yeah, they? so it sort of matches them really. Um, don't, I'm, yeah, I'm not seeing it's actually that different. I can't, I just can't get over it. Thank goodness this car's got this light interior as well yeah. that just lifts it. Yeah. And, you know, obviously you've, you've had to trim it. It was the exceptional bit of metal work, the previous, how they put this roof in place was <coughs> mad. But crazy yeah. engineering. Well, they'd folded it. it. This isn't just flat, you know, they'd actually yeah. got, done a, a sort of double fold on it. So it's, oh. actually, it's actually pretty strong. Yeah. Um, it's not just sheet metal. No. Uh, and that's what, that's what allowed us to keep this flush, drop the perspex in. Yeah. And this is uh, water jet cut stainless steel. This has been cut by a water jet. That's Incredible, really. Isn't it? And it just frames it, doesn't it? It just finishes it. It didn't have it yeah. before. And, no. and, it, and it so improves it. Yeah. Just, yeah, mega. Because it sort of matches, obviously, the windows with the same surround. It's about so the same thickness. Same thing. Yeah. Absolutely mega. It's, Good. It's, it somehow looks so big, though. That's the bit. You see yeah. both front and rear seats. You just want to get in and climb in and see it. Yeah. yeah. What else has changed? You know, oh, the spinners, isn't it? The black spinners. Yes. Which. I've put on just because that's what the original photographs of this car had, of the black spinners. Um, yeah, it's a distinctive look. I couldn't, when I saw I've got, you know, got as much history as I can with this car, and I've never seen one. Have you seen one with those on? Uh, I haven't actually, no. Um, no. I, and I, the funny thing is, I think they suit this car. Being yeah. Black. I mean, I think on a Miura or something like that, they might look a bit, they're normally silver painted or yeah. plated or something. But on this, I think it works. It yeah. picks up all the black details well, on the it body. Is, isn't it? With this black yeah. line here. Yeah. yeah. What we really want to do, though, is see the engine. Now, the crown jewels of this car. Wow. I can't even recognise it. I always thought it was quite good under here before. <laughs> Look at well. this. <laughs> and that, all this replaced yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, you could sleep on that, couldn't you? Well, you could. Yeah, it's very nice. Very, I mean, it's beautifully done. <laughs> Feel, feels, uh, feels very nice. It does, does isn't it? Why? Oh, yeah. we're, oh, we're all guessing it's an insulation to stop the paint, but I don't know, paint piece. Yeah, it? well, it's either heat or um, sound, one yeah. or the other, or both. But uh, this was it's all pretty. Done. This was all pretty uh, sort of covered in paint, yeah. and, you know. So we yes. had to scrape this right back to bare metal, really. Yeah, I mean, it's just like someone had gone around with a black paint spray can. Exactly. And everything. Oh, it's just painted yeah. black, and um, I, it's just annoying, especially when other people lifted their beautiful bonnets. And I thought, no, I'm not going to lift mine. But, but yeah. now you'll probably see this car mainly parked up with the bonnet up from now on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a jewel. Absolute jewel. And well, you've done some miles on it now, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've done about 150 miles, something Have like you that. Really? Yeah. Wow. I uh, haven't been anywhere near 8,000 RPM. No, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, it's really it's loosening up nicely. It, it is. really is. Oh, it is. Um, talking what? of which, what? I, uh, I've got a little present for you. I saw that box. I thought, oh, what? no um, way. This is uh, a very nice lady called Cindy. Yeah, it is. Um, she said, thank you very much for using our pistons. And we so, would, because we spoke about, you said you I wanted said one for your I'd, desk. It's a spare piston. Yeah, so she's, yes. had one, she's had one made. I won't get it out because I don't want to touch it, but there wow you go. Wow-wee, wow-wee. I'm going to have to tidy my desk just for this, I yeah. think. Look at that. But he's beautiful though. Look at that. They were magnificent, magnificent pistons. That's really nice of them. So they've watched the video then? Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> Gorilla Rod. Right. They're all, yeah. I can't keep it in the car. Why do you keep a spare piston in the car, sir? Oh, just in case. It's, it's always the, good to Please have. don't take it as a reflection no, of no, our work. No. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be changing yeah. them at the roadside. No, that's really kind. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're watching this video, thank you very much. So I just love the look of that. That's, that's great. She, she wrote a lovely note, actually, which yeah. uh, I'll give you as well. Oh, that's but, brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Yeah. Wow, we. So the radiator. Yeah. If you remember, we rebuilt this. Yeah. This is thirty percent more efficient than it was standard. Oh, okay. Uh, it's got um, a more efficient core in it. So you're overheating 
problems will be a thing of the past. Banished. Absolutely, global warming can just bring it on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Any, any temperature. And Often it's a horror tomorrow. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the air <laughs> conditioning is working as well. Good. That's great. So now, the one thing we did discuss electronic ignition, we're sort of not doing it at the moment, but you think at some point it's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, it works very well on the standard system. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but something for the future. New, yeah. fu new fuel lines. Now, I've had a few people mention cost. We ought to grab yeah. that thorny thing. But I mean, yeah, the, the engine rebuild. Yeah, I know it's Charles. What's uh, well, it's it, in round figures. It's about twenty-eight thousand pounds plus VAT. Yeah, twenty-eight. Uh, but you've been paying on. Monthly. Well, yeah, I found that a really good way. Knowing I was going to do the engine build to bit pay monthly, but start <laughs> early. Yes. Means there's, there isn't the huge shock at the end, and you know, well, actually, is another. So, so yeah. there's a little balance to pay now, yes. and that's that's been great. There is TAT to go on top of. Right, with Tyrrell added tax. <laughs> the Tyrrell added tax beyond yeah. VAT. Yeah. Is that why it's, it's just a back? discretionary right. service? So right, so plus taxes. Is, <laughs> there's more than one. Oh, I was just thinking it was VAT. <laughs> Oh right. Well, I better. I'll tell you what I better do then is take it for a drive and check it's all oh. all right then. Ah, well, <laughs> rather going That's a very good truck. response. No, I, I can't <laughs> wait to hear. It. The only time I heard it was that time when we started it up. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to start it up again. Okay. Yeah. Great. It is stone cold at the moment. Stone cold. So right. you need to do the usual pulling right. the accelerators I trick. Can, I can do that. Right. Which Fuel pump. You know well. If you hear it, it goes to a slightly different noise. Than me. There we are. Try that. Match it. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. See, I'm literally just touching the throttle there. Yeah. It should be low. No sound. No, no, it's piss. That is just quiet. That's, there's nothing, is there? It's just a silky smooth, oiled, mechanical sound. It should be. Um, Normally it's up at about 1500 RPM. Right. Get the oil around, get a bit of heat through it. Um, that's about 1500 RPM now. There she is. Oh wow. Do you know, it's time to take it for a drive. It's definitely time to take it for a drive. Good. sunglasses 83,000 miles on the Espada this has been it's got yeah it's over a year since I last drove this now mega brand new engine fans making slightly strange noises ah oh. So glad it's got e, uh, EZ or EZ power steering on here. One of the best things I ever did, really. It's really made this car usable. Revs are over here, but I'm not using any revs at the moment. We're just going to get a little bit of temperature in. Uh, 
first drive in this one. A rebuilt engine. That's good. And he said the gear changed to me. I know it's the difference. like you're in a convertible and it's sort of bright but then there's no wind disturbance and you look up and it's, it's like daylight everywhere you look it's always been a very classy car the Espada fortunately actually because the roof finishes there it's not actually as glary as I thought it was going to be almost more in the back. When they freed off the steering box, it's almost got too much assistance now. I might have that looked at. What am I using? 3,000. It's funny with this engine, you're using more revs than you realise. I'm at 3,000 now. I'm in top. Coming along at 60 and it's two and a half thousand rpm. Oh, I can't wait to actually use that engine properly. Yeah, it's just a quicker response I can certainly feel. tells me I'm going to run it in for about 350 miles, 150 have done, so another 200 miles and then we change the oil and then go gradually build up the revs. Absolutely silent from the roof, shock for that. Brakes feel good. works and that's the most important thing on a day like this. Right, back to the workshop, say my goodbyes and load it on the lorry. It's nearly 12 months since I last dropped this car off and it has been transformed with this rebuilt engine, sunroof, all sorts of other work. It's a reborn Espada worth every penny. So, well, it works. No, it's fantastic. He made it back, I, which is I, good It's stuff. always a good sign, there's no pools underneath it, nothing like that. No, it, I mean, it's just so nice to get back in it again. I can't, you know, I was just thinking, is it 12 months since I've driven this mm. car? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just frustration from not being able to use the revs. Uh, yeah. but, but you just hear the engine, it all sounds, there's no funny noises. The gear change, yes, that is tighter. Um, the only thing I can criticise on it is the steering is overly light now. And I think you said you'd had a go at the steering box, haven't you? It was a bit over-adjusted. It was too tight. Common it? problem on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I just backed it off a slight bit. Yeah, and I think I had this electric steering put on it, and they matched it to the resistance that was there. Right, got you. You've created a looser, you know, the correct steering, and so now I've got over-assisted steering. But that's it being electric power steering. That's just a little adjustment. adjustment. Yeah. So that, that's that's it. Brakes pulls up. Everything everything works. And I can't get over the roof because I thought it's going to be glaring. But actually, sat in the driver's seat, and it's not glare, glaring. You don't. You sort of look round, and you suddenly see sky, and it's not tinted. It's sort of normal colour, like in a convertible set state. The obvious. But when you're sat there, it's, this acts like a peak cap. So you're you're not conscious yes. of this vast yeah. glass window above you, which sure. is which is nice. 
and especially with the air conditioning pumping away, which is um, remarkable on a 1970 car. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it worked, worked a treat. So um, yeah, well, thank you for bringing my Espada back to life. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been a wonderful journey. I have to say, I've, I've been doing, yes, it's cost some money, but I've actually really enjoyed it. I, and I think about the value, you know, we, I got into this car at a lower value. It enhances it, it's part of owning this car. You can't just have it sat there and not work. You've got to keep them up and together. And then that's how you enjoy them, really. Yeah. So but they're so eminently fun. usable as well, aren't that's they? That's what I can I always thought about this. This is the first one that always started. Wonderful lights, fit people in, not, you know, not too showy. <laughs> He says, <laughs> everything's relative, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, compared to the Countach, the owner of a Countach, Tesla Rossa, and other yeah, things, yeah. this one has a bit of elegance about it. But yeah, it's been nice. And thank you to the gang and everybody who was yeah, involved in Tyrrell Works with Crane, Pete, you know, Marcus, putting it all back together again. It's great Gosh. skills. Thank you great for your skill. custom. Yeah, no pleasure. We'll have to find another one to do. Yeah, a bit of that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Well, I hope you enjoy this new, different sort of Harry's Garage. We now have the Espada back to do some more adventures. If you have enjoyed this video, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.